please turn in your student book, page 682. We're going to get some background knowledge and look at our skill and strategy um, before we dig into our anchor text. So our target skill this week is text and graphic features. As you read The Ever-Living Tree, notice the text and graphic features in the selection. These features include icons, timelines, maps, diagrams, and italic type. A graphic feature often adds to information in the text. When you come to a text or graphic feature, you can ask yourself, how does this help me understand the text? How does it add to my understanding of the topic? Then you can use a graphic organizer like the one below to list each text and graphic feature and tell what information it gives. As you read, you can use a chart like this one. It's going to, by keeping track of the text and graphic features, it's going to help you to remember the most important information in the story. Our target strategy is to monitor and clarify. The ever-living tree covers a number of centuries and switches between natural and human history. As you read, monitor your comprehension of the events and the passage of time in the selection. And if you don't understand something, pause to clarify or clear up your confusion. It's very important that you stop periodically while you're reading a text to monitor and make sure you understand what you're reading. It's a very good strategy to use, especially when you're reading informational texts. Um, one way to clarify something is to reread the selection slowly and think about the main idea it may contain. All right, look at um, life cycles. Let's preview the topic. Every living thing has a life cycle. The life cycle begins with birth and ends with death. For most trees, life begins when a seed splits apart and is a seedling, or tiny tree begins to grow. The ever-living tree tells the story of a coast redwoods life cycle. Coast redwoods, native to California, are among Earth's oldest and tallest living things. As you read the selection, you'll find out how long a coast redwood can live and what it must survive in order to become a living giant. If you turn the page, we will find our author and our illustrator. You can read more about them on your own. We already have seen this text and graphic feature, um, graphic organizer, so we're going to use these to help us understand the text features and to locate information. The Ever Living Tree is an informational text and it gives us facts and examples about a topic. This selection has maps and diagrams, and there are realistic drawings that show scenes of nature and people from long ago. Because of the drawings, the diagrams, and the title, I can tell that this is a nonfiction informational text, and I know from the title that it's about coast redwood trees. On the bottom of page 685, let's read the essential question. How do forests and trees show change? We're going to keep this in mind as we read The Ever-Living Tree. In a second, I'm going to ask you to pause the video. When you do that, I want you to do three things. I want you to preview the story. It starts on page 685 and ends on page 699. So you're going to preview the whole text looking for the informational text things that we talked about. The graphics, the maps, the diagrams. Okay, you're going to look for those things as you um, do your preview. Then you're going to predict what you think the story is going to be about. Okay, we've given you some clues as to what it might be about, but what do you think? Okay, and then based on your preview and your prediction and what you know about informational text, I want you to set a purpose for reading this story. All right, so pause the video, preview, predict, and set your purpose. All right, now that you've had a chance to do the three Ps, all right, um, I will model how to set a purpose. This informational text provides factual information about a topic. And in this case, it's the life cycle of a tree. Now, one purpose I could have for reading could be to find out more information about how a tree grows and about what happens in the world during a tree's lifespan. 
okay, their lifespan. So what is your purpose for reading? Pause the video now and read the text on your own. Remember, it starts, the words start on page 686 and they end on page 699. When you've finished reading the entire selection, please come back to the video so we can think through the text together. All right, now that you've read the text, we are going to go through page by page, and I'm going to ask you some questions as we think through what you have just read. I'd like you to pause the video and discuss the questions with your learning adult, um, and make sure that you can share your ideas with them about what you read. So according to the author, what saved the redwood forests from the glaciers? Why do you think the author interrupts the narrative about the tree to talk about Alexander the Great? What is a catapult? Why does the author keep repeating that the tree kept growing and getting bigger? Why does the author choose to talk about the building of the Great Wall? Why did the Olone consider the Redwood Forest a sacred place? What key details support the idea that the tree is strong and persistent? In the illustration, is the caravan traveling through a fire? What happened to the redwood tree during and after the fire? What is a burl? How does the context and illustration help you know what it means? What can you infer about life in China compared to life in Europe when Marco Polo lived? What happens to the cones after they fall to the ground, and why is it important that the cones burst open? What are two ways that the redwood tree reproduces or creates new trees? Analyze the text, similes. Authors use similes to compare two unlike things using like or as. What does the simile, smooth as glass, mean? Find an example of a simile on this page. What effect does the use of the simile have on the reader? What does the author mean by finance when she writes, he persuaded the Queen of Spain to finance his voyage? How were Marco Polo and Christopher Columbus alike, and how were they different? What details does the author provide to show that the tree is important for animals in the forest? Analyze the text, text structure. How are the ideas in the text structured? How does the timeline along the top of the page support this structure? What clues in the text around the word boomtown help you understand what it means? What resources do you think hunters, loggers, tanners, and miners exploit? Summarize what happened to the tree on pages 696 and 697. To what does the author compare the tree's length, and why does the author draw that comparison? What sentence on page 698 expresses the main idea of the selection? What details does the author include to support the main idea?
Now that you have just read an informational text about the, red, or the coast redwood, let's look at page 700 together in your, in your book. Informational texts often um, include and contain text and graphic features that make important information easier to locate and understand. Text features like bold or italic print make some words stand out from the rest. Graphic features like diagrams, charts, and timelines simplif simplify complicated information. So the everlast in the everlasting the ever living I'm sorry the ever living tree is an informational text about the growth of a coast redwood. It includes text and graphic features that give information to, that adds to the text. It includes italic type timelines, maps, diagrams, and icons. Icons are just small pictures that represent ideas. In this selection, the map of Alexander's empire and the diagram of the layers of a redwood tree help explain ideas in the text. The, icon, the icons at the beginning of each section are clues to what the author is describing there. The repeating redwood cone icon is a signal that tells you, now the author will discuss the redwood tree again. If you look back at page 687 in the Everliving Tree, what graphic features are on that page and what do they tell you? The text on that page tells about Alexander the Great and the area his empire covered. The map shows where his empire was and where the places discussed in the text are. Text structure. The way authors organize their facts in informational text is called text structure. In The Ever-Living Tree, the author presents two sets of events. One set of events describes the life of a tree. The other tells about human events that happened during the tree's lifetime. The redwood cone icon signals facts about the redwoods. Other icons signal human events. As you reread, look for clues to help to how the text is structured. We also had a similes. Authors use similes to compare two unlike things using like or as. Similes help readers get a clear picture in their minds of what an author is describing. In this sentence, the surface of the lake was as reflective as a mirror. As reflective as a mirror is a simile. The comparison shows that the water is still smooth and reflects images like a mirror. Authors use similes to make the writing more interesting and more vivid and memorable for the reader. Turn the page one more time. You're going to return to the essential question with your learning adult and you're going to talk about how forests and trees show change using what you learned from the story and what you already know about the topic. Then you're going to look at the classroom conversation box and you're going to answer these three questions. You can pause the video to do that or you can wait until I'm finished talking and do it then. But if you want to pause the video and dis discuss and return to the essential question, just come back and join me when you're done. Time marches on. Recall historical events. With your learning adult, think of two recent events to add to the timeline in the ever-living tree. Make a short description of each event that you've chosen and create a picture or icon to go with the, the event. Then compare your events with the events that um, another pair of students choose for the timeline, which you won't be able to do um, at home, but you can still create your own um, picture or icon to go with the two events um, that you want to add to the timeline in the story. Once you've done that, you're going to have a writing response. What did you enjoy most about the selection? Was the author's choice to tell the story of humans along with the story of the Redwood a good one? We want you to write two paragraphs that explain your opinions about the text. Include reasons for your opinions and details that support your reasons. You can do this in your composition notebook or on a clean piece of lined paper. Our writing tip is in the first paragraph, state what you liked most about the selection, giving two reasons why. In the second paragraph, state your opinion about the structure of the selection, and then give one or two reasons for your opinion, and if you liked it. 